All right, E36 fans, uh, Ed's back. We're gonna really dig into E36. This is the, um, this is the, these are the things that need to be done in order to make the car work unquestionably. Correct. To make it, we'll call it OG spec. Uh, so today's video is gonna be, or we can, I'm gonna call this how to, which I usually don't do. I normally call it how I. How many of these have you done? <sighs> well, I still, few, right? yeah. I mean, I've done so many. It's just I can almost do it with my eyes closed. This is what so. you, this is what you need to do. This on Correct. one of these cars. Yeah. Why do we need to do this? Man, it's just a lot of the uh, plastic things with the heat. Um, they just tend to crack, and mm -hmm. when something cracks, and you do not pay attention to that gauge, now you just uh, technically do a head gasket, or even worse, warp ahead. Because nowadays, to get ahead, even used, it's they're very hard. Got so it. you want to be able to put the time and effort at the front end instead of at the back end. So we're gonna be doing cooling. That's what this video is, of course, as you see from the title. We're gonna be doing power steering. We're gonna be doing a Rack Doctor steering rack, which is in transit. Hopefully it'll get here soon. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be doing uh, headlights, intake, throttle body, uh, and a bunch of other stuff, uh, diff, uh, trans, uh, short shifter, all these different things are gonna be in various videos. But today's video is gonna be how we do the cooling system upgrade, uh, and we'll go through all the different products. We'll have links in descriptions where you get all this stuff. Um, uh, Michael Alba has a whole spreadsheet of all these all these items that we had to buy, where it makes sense to buy OEM versus a OEM yeah. whatever aftermarket, you call it, yeah. an aftermarket you know replacement. Beefier, beefier. Yeah. So um, so let's roll. Okay. I'm going to follow Eb around. He's going to do his thing. All right. Uh, so one thing that I. Uh, I'm not used to seeing these on the E36s that I've been working on is the actual shield underneath. This is pretty much brand new. Um, so we're going to take this down so we can get to the drain plug and then we'll drink, uh, drain the coolant out. So because of the beautiful floors that we have here, um, we're going to put a little bit of cardboard down once we get to removing the housing because that uh, the thermostat housing, there's going to be a lot of coolant that comes out through that. So we got the drain plug here, plastic. So you, you know, be careful. It doesn't take a lot of lot to tighten it. What I did forget to do is remove the cap up top from the uh, from this uh, surge tank. So uh, this is going to dribble a little bit. All right, so just going to put the, um, the drain back in. That's enough coolant to get it out. So I don't, I'm just going to hand tighten it in place and call it a day. So now underneath here, pretty much as of right now, that's all I'm going to have to end up doing. So lower the car down and uh, start taking the intake box out and uh, removing that beautiful clutch fan and, uh, and mosing it along. All right, I'm going to take the intake off. Just gonna clean up some area. I'm gonna take the uh, the vent for the alternator off. And then the next step is the uh, part that I love the most. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. Not on this one. So we're gonna take the uh, fan clutch off. All right, so righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. See, I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm not the only one who has to think about it sometimes, right? Everybody has to. Well, on this one, you got to because you have to do the opposite. So you don't want to get it even tighter. I need a bigger screwdriver here. So what I'm doing is I'm using the, the screwdriver to pry it because I don't have a tool for it so that she doesn't spin. All right, so I'm going to leave that in there and I will remove the hose from the top because it will not hold any more coolant or it doesn't shouldn't and just in case if it does I don't want to make a mess and be that guy let's have Eb over no 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 he made a mess last time well I mean I don't mind a mess it's just that oh, okay. darn, uh, so good. it's just that it's cool and gets on the floor and it's yeah. slippery forever yes so uh, one thing that uh, we will be replacing as well while we're here will be the uh, the thermostat housing the infamous plastic one um, on the newer S52s, uh, they end up cracking. So uh, we'll be replacing it with a nice solid aluminum one. And our beautiful little clips here. Let me grab the smaller one. All right, so this one, I 
I am going to uh, lose a lot of coolant because uh, it's the back coolant hose. So. Mm, there we go. Got some little rags or shop towels. Yep, Should I just do it like a band-aid and just pull it and let it go so you could... Uh... No. Do it, like, <laughs> do it slow and controlled. There we go. Man, look at this brand new oil pan. Gosh, I'm mesmerized. Okay, so uh, this is the hose that connects uh, to the metal pipe that goes on the back of the water pump. Uh, back to the back um, that attaches to the heater core or the heater valves. Um, this tube or this pipe here is the one that connects to your surge tank on the passenger side. So it's just a um, hose clamp and uh, just take it off slowly. So this plastic piece right here, there's got a little bit of a nipple on it and you got to pull up towards the sky and then you could slide the uh, plastic piece out. So it's kind of like a reusable zip tie. So it makes it so much easier with a headlight gone, but this is the clip we gotta uh, disconnect. And uh, the clip, or the plug, the clip is underneath, which is between the hose clamp itself. And, and there she goes, and that's it. Now she'll come out in one whole entire piece. Oh, I have one more clamp, I'll be darned. And there she is. So uh, there you go. Um, That's it? It access, accesses just a lot of the motor. So as you can tell when it's black, this is the plastic one. Uh, they are prone to crack uh, with the heat. So um, if you ever get a chance, you replace it with the, uh, the aluminum one. And uh, now here comes a little bit more of a, of a coolant mess. So we're going to go ahead and remove the thermostat housing put the new thermostat in and uh, put the new piece in and then that there will be done. What we're gonna do is all of, all of what's up front here on the engine is gonna get completely refreshed. So we're going to install new pulleys, new water pump, uh, thermostat housing, new belts, um, just anything that uh, will technically uh, will be considered a maintenance item down the road or can technically go wrong. Um, we're doing everything up front so that way all there is to do is just drive the car and enjoy it. So let's get cracking. So gotta take the cap off of the adjuster to be able to put uh, uh, Torx, oh, Allen head on this one, um, and be able to remove the tension so I could remove the, uh, the belt. And the same thing with, um, uh, with this one for the AC. I'm so used to not having AC. Hmm. AC pull these on my cars. go one belt down and there we go that was, that was quick go ahead and replace this one real quick So now it comes the messy part, Matt. So now um, just removing everything that's gonna be replaced. So next thing I'm gonna drop the water pump and then the thermostat housing. Uh, that's a first. Yeah. Uh, normally I get a stud that comes out with it, but um, I don't think these are gonna be long enough. The water pumps come with a uh, a threaded slot here on on each end and you're supposed to put one of the bolts through it that's long enough and what it does it pulls the uh, the water pump out um, these are the bolts for the pulley but they're just not going to be long enough I could get it to come out a little bit but it won't come out all the way but let's give it a whirl so when you do do this don't do it with an electric one just to run it just run it in oh look it's already starting to come out I like to do it by hand. 
you want to draw them out pretty much about the same. Oh man, oh, look at that. You had this all along, man? All right, now I'm bottomed out. So let's see if I can get the rest of it out this way. Many sleepless nights on this one, huh? If we went ahead that bucket. Now, don't forget to take the screws back out. Otherwise, you're gonna be looking for them if you end up tossing it before you're all done. Plastic bus, say goodbye. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tensioners, knock them out while we're in here. I will do this one here and the AC one as well. Just because we're in here. Okay, so when you replace your pulleys, um, you can have this uh, dust cover in the back, make sure you replace it. It goes right back there. Okay, so um, there is one pulley that uh, we did not get, uh, which will, we, we will replace a little bit later, um, but we did went, and get a, uh, went ahead and got the tensioners for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that old tensioner out for the new one and uh, then work my way to the water pump and the thermostat housing. So what we got here is um, Stewart Racing Water Pump and uh, the housing itself, as you can see, compared to the original one, which I already tossed, um, it doesn't have this whole housing. It sits in the actual, um, in the engine uh, so it doesn't cavitate. So it flows better and it's also a nice metal, thick metal uh, impeller. So I've run two of these on my race cars and yet to have any issues. So, so just because it's, it's a little slick, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit. Normally I use oil, but it's not gonna work too well there. Um, so when you get this in and you're only going to be able to get a couple of the threads on there So you want to do it by hand. So just grab a wrench and uh, I'll start from this one over here And you just got to barely turn it um, The o-ring itself is what you're fighting against and just do it little by little Until you have more threads than a quarter of a thread and now she's starting to Ring in and what you can end up doing is you could look at the ones that uh, don't have a nut on them You can tell that they're they're coming in. So I'll go ahead and put this one on. And I'll just tighten this one a little bit more. And then this one. Now I gotta get this one down here in the bottom. And now you wanna do just like uh, the merry-go-round. Go all the way around, little by little. Now you wanna make sure you take your time on this. Don't just rush it in there from one side to the other. The O-ring is the only thing that's gonna seal it and you don't wanna go back in here and redo it all again because the O-ring. So there we go. Now they're all snug. Now I can just tighten it. Now whenever I can, I always try to do um, crossways just to put it, uh, make sure it sits in there tight. Now with my built-in torque wrench here, um, this is a very small. I know some, some people out there always love to go and torque everything. And to be honest with you, small stuff like this. Now, small stuff like this, I don't worry about. I've been doing this so long that I kind of have a general idea of what tight is. I mean, so that's tight. She's good. She's not going anywhere. So now it's thermostat. All right. So I already went ahead and cleaned the surface off uh, on the thermostat. So we're just going to go ahead and throw the... Uh, the new thermostat in. I got the O-ring in place there. All right. So here's the uh, the O-ring uh, that comes with it. You know, brand new, not plastic. So uh, very easy. So I normally end up grabbing this. So I end up using the the upper bolt here. Oh, I'm sorry, down here in the bottom, uh, so I could get it in place because it's easier to get to. And see, 
you just gotta be careful with the o-ring gotta keep your eye on it and what i use this bolt here is just to bring it down so that way the o-rings and the thermostat stay in place now to help me is i got my finger i don't know if you could see it i got my finger down here which is leaning which this is resting on and it's on a, and i'm kind of pressing up on it on the actual cylinder head part that way it doesn't move and now i wish i had my my wrench so i'm just moving it around make sure everything is good and i also take a peek just in case it wouldn't sit there very well if the o-ring popped out but she's in place so everything i'm trying to do is just by hand all right so now we're just gonna we're gonna torque her down so the long bolt goes towards the bottom make sure that's i'm sorry the long one goes up top Ole mole. Short one on the bottom. All right, so uh, gonna finalize the front here. Gonna put the pulley on. And now it does go one way. Uh, the holes are at, set at a certain pattern. So I wouldn't say it goes one way, it goes two ways. The bolts won't line up if you try to do it the other way. Yeah, baby. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna drop in the, uh, the radiator and uh, get the hoses in place and uh, technically finalize this area here. And what we'll do is we'll worry about uh, um, wiring up the, uh, the fan, the electric fan, and uh, get that going. And because we still have some coolant hoses we need to replace underneath the throttle body. So. All right, so here we go. Uh, we've got the, um, the fan here and with the nice radiator and a surge tank. So what we've got is the new coolant level sensor that we're gonna be installing. Um, it came with the, uh, the drain uh, for the radiator. And this is the little nipple that goes on the surge tank here uh, for a drain tube and the radiator cap. And then we also have uh, the kit for the fan relay um, or the kit for the, uh, the fan itself, the uh, install kit. Makes it it's so much more easier. And um, then we have the pigtail for the, uh, for the fan itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to assemble everything. So I have to take the search tank off to be able to get this puppy on. And um, next time you see it, she'll be all assembled. All right guys, so she's all assembled. I uh, got the hose in, I uh, got the sensor in place and clocked so that the sensor plug uh, will be easy to install um, on this end right here. I got the, the mounts, the rubber mounts for the radiator. Uh, the cap on and the new hose going all the way across to the upper uh, nipple up there. The new drain plug, which is going to be a very easy one. You never have to worry about over tightening this one, um, on, on, unlike the, uh, the OEM ones. So she looks great. Uh, here's the hose. Don't think it's just anything. So, um, so yeah, and uh, she looks beautiful. So let's throw her in. All right, so uh, we was just about to put the radiator in and then realized we lift this sucker off. Now you got to be careful. There is a nipple that uh, that the uh, the pulley sits in there. Please make sure that you put it in that little slot right there. So, so the belt. <laughs> I've done a lot of these, so it's kind of easy the way it goes. The easiest thing to do is you have to put it on the harmonic balance pulley first, or you have to get it on that one. And now what you do is you leave the power steering one last. And I already put the cap on, got ahead of myself. All right, so as you can see, it goes from the water pump underneath this pulley to the alternator, and then it'll go to the power steering pump. And then from here comes on the other side, the back side of the water pump goes to this pulley and it goes around it and then around the harmonic balance. Oh, shoot, I went the wrong way with it. Forgot my righty tidy lefty loosey thing. I just gotta slowly just compress it. And there she goes. Now when you end up doing it, just go around, make sure that the belt is sitting in the pulleys. You don't wanna rip up a new belt and everything looks good, so. Now time for the AC one. As you can tell, I struggled a little bit on that one and uh, that shows you I rarely deal with AC. 
Why? Because I'm usually working on race cars. You like to sweat. <laughs> no, I got to have AC in the car. <laughs> That's one thing about new pieces. You want to be so careful with them because they're so new. So these clips, we have new ones, so they're going to come out and it just pops right into place right underneath the lip. There we go. That's one clip. There we go. Hey, if anybody's uh, wants some used parts, uh, I think the car came with 36,000 miles on it. Uh, ask in the comments, and uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Matt will let him go. He's uh, he's not keen to keeping those around. So, and that's it. I mean, they really go in simple and easy. It's underneath that lip, and you're done. And that's it. So now we just bring it in. If I could get it in the center, there we go. She looks great. That's good. So I'm going to leave these hoses off for right now. And what I'm going to do, I am going to now start disassembling the, uh, the, the uh, throttle body and getting to this area, uh, removing a strut tower so that I can re start replacing these hoses right here. So I'll move this one out of the way. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get going with that. All right, so just moving those over to the side. You got the EVAP plug down here and uh, yeah, this is for the uh, traction control, a a a ASC. We're going to replace the throttle body while I'm here, right? Yeah. All right. So since uh, I have to remove it, um, what we're going to do is we're going to install the new dining one at the same time that I replace the, uh, the cooling hoses down here. So we'll do knock those two out at the same time. Okay, so what we're doing is going above and beyond uh, what, uh, with some of these items. Um, one of the things is, you know, these are the O-rings for the metal cooling pipe that goes on the backside of the water pump housing. Uh, they do leak, um, so we want to replace that. And since we are already replacing the, the uh, throttle body is we need to remove the intake to be able to get to a couple of other hoses that we decided while we're there to go ahead and replace. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just um, it's just more time. Um, but for your the way you got to think about it is you're you're almost in there. Why not spend the extra dollar on a hose, twenty five cents per O ring, thirty five cents per O ring, and just just do it. I mean, it's uh, you're already there. You're already doing it. So let's uh, keep plugging it along. So the next thing is I'm taking the intake manifold off, and then we'll start replacing some more stuff. Well, what we should be doing is while we're here, replacing this particular intake manifold with an M50 manifold. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Matt. A little bit of a mess. A nice little fancy strap that we've got there. No need to take it all completely out. Out of the uh, slots underneath. Tell you what, it's been a while since I've messed with this much OEM stuff. So here's the uh, the two lines that will be replaced. This one here, this one as well, and then like we stated, we got the two O-rings on the metal hard line. That's right here. So we got some more removing to do to be able to get to that point all right so uh, we there's a lot that had to be removed to get to where we're at just to replace these two o-rings right here which i already removed and uh it was uh, the whole harness had to be uh loosened uh from this brackets and uh, moved out of the way to be able to get this uh this uh, uh metal tube out of the way and of course disconnect it from its hose back here um, because the hose back here on the back side of the, uh, of the head, of the cylinder head, that's what we're going to, going to replace as well. So we're going to go ahead and replace that, which connects to the heater, heater control valves right there. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot, and uh, 
the step-by-step uh, -step procedure probably probably missed a couple steps but in the interim um, it's just a lot and once you take the intake manifold off um, it's just, it's just a mess there's a couple pieces on the bottom of the intake manifold like this vacuum line and a couple of the connectors that they're just stuffed in there that you once you go to take it out you'll technically see that something is uh, holding you up so um, just a piece of advice if you do end up doing it just be gentle just don't pull on it um, you know it should come out easy and as you can see we didn't want to take the uh, I didn't have the tool to take the fuel uh, lines off so that's why we're working with the way it is now because I, I, we don't have the tool for it so um, so yeah so we're gonna replace the parts and um, hopefully slap the sucker back together um, because of how much more area or how much room we have here we're gonna go ahead and do another thing which is replace the uh, power steering reservoir and um, get to some of the uh, some of the lines while we're here um, just to make it so much more easier so it turned out to concentrating on one job and end up doing all of them at the same time <laughs> I already knew it was gonna happen it was just a matter of uh, getting to it so here we are let's just keep plugging away all right so uh, what we've got is we got all our hoses and everything that we had uh, ordered that while we were here we decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and just get it done so we have the oil separator uh, we got the uh, vacuum line that goes from the oil separator down to the um, dipstick and uh, the remaining heater hoses and um, and yeah that should pretty much um, plug everything up so we're just gonna go ahead and get started with that so the first thing I'll do is I'll grab the uh, intake manifold and um, start installing the um, oil separator and work my way in here oil separator I mean really it's honestly uh, you got three bolts and it just pops right on off you got the new seal that goes in place and it's really honestly very easy to to, to change out and then we also end up getting the new hose uh, so we were fighting um, we went ahead and got the, the screws but uh, because the car was dried ice, I mean, it really kept the zinc look. So we're going to put the, uh, the ones that we took off, we're going to put them back on just to keep, uh, keep the look going. So, all right, new, new gaskets. Now you got to make sure that you go in because these do have little, um, uh, I want to call them little nipples that hold them in place. So when you put the, uh, the manifold back on they will not fall off kind of like the m50 intakes okay so what we're going through now is kind of putting everything in place on how it's going to go just loosely so that we make sure we have everything connected uh you know we have the TPS here and then the actual um, ACT, ACR, I, what's that? ASC. ASC. We have that here. So we got our, our purge valve here connected and then we have our MAP sensor. So all these are here connected um, and making sure that it's going to be routed correctly because we still have the hose to put here and then the other hose that I got right here. Um, and then of course we've got our solenoid valve here and uh, so we have this little empty b uh, bad boy here and so we're trying to figure out where it goes at this point and um, it's a good thing to try to to locate everything before you put everything down and tighten everything down like we don't even have them in the manifold tightened down yet everything's still loose because just in case we've got to take it back off for something that's a little hard to put back together. So that's where we're at now. We did get everything now uh, situated to where it connected. So the one wire that we were looking for, the one plug, uh, that's where it went right there. It, um, I was looking for a pigtail. Um, didn't think it was on the fuel rail like that. But, so we have that there. And then we have the, the solenoid. Uh, solenoid gets bolted here. And then we have that plug that goes there. And uh, everything here, like we stated, we already got. So now it, everything looks good. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one more glance at everything to make sure it is going in the right spot and it's not rubbing in anything. And then I'm gonna drop the intake manifold and uh, start securing everything down. So excited, excited. It's coming together. It's coming together, exactly. Okay, so we got the brackets, the intake secured, we got the injectors, the injector rails, we got all the connections here, um, the little lines underneath here. Uh, the most painted about one, which I was afraid of when I was taking it off, 
and it came true when I was putting it back on, is the bolt that holds the fuel lines underneath the intake manifold. Um, I was thinking it was straight through, it was at an angle, but finally got, uh, got that in place. And the only thing that is uh, technically left right now are the two coolant hoses, which we will uh, get those attached when we finalize the cooling system, because we're gonna be installing the uh, dine-in throttle body. Okay, so now that we got pretty much the, uh, the throttle body, everything in place, we have everything connected down here that we need to, uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the, the coolant. So we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, radiator hoses. And then what I'm going to end up doing is, um, we're also going to hook up the power for the coolant fan and get that uh, sorted out as well. And then once we get all that uh, tidied up, we'll go ahead and pull the, uh, the coolant system down in the vacuum. Um, that's in a good way to check for, uh, for leaks as well. And uh, that way we get all the air out of the uh, engine and there is no air pockets whatsoever. So it should be smooth sailing, no, no need to be burping it down the road. So uh, we'll keep going with that. So here is our fuse and we are going to put in the 30 or 40. So as we stated, this is going to be the power coming in. All right, so this is going to be connecting to my yellow source on the relay. It actually is labeled that says 12 volt battery. So that was going to go over here. I'll just put it this way so I don't want to mess up with the paint. So then we have our red wire from the relay. And that one, is, it's uh, written on there, it goes to the fan. And of course we have our fan here that's already connected. So we'll connect that there. Here's my ground. And then here is the sensor wire, um, which is number zero. number zero is ground. So I put it to ground because these two will be going to ground. And then I have my uh, number two green wire, um, which is labeled here. I don't know if you can end up getting it here, number two. And then that one is going to go to my gray wire here, which is going to be this uh, sensor uh, signal and that's how we got it so we got it all tied together so the yellow wire is just going to go to uh, power for the coil side of the relay so that way when everything gets triggered it'll switch over the and wire, i'm sorry orange wire i am sometimes uh colorblind um and uh so yeah so that's pretty much what we've got and uh we're going to start uh, cutting some wires cutting them to uh to the correct length and start connecting them trying to get it to seal right all right so what i'm doing is just trying to make it a little bit uh, cleaner um, on the way the directions of the current wires are going so um, there is a um, uh, clip here with a uh, with a nut and i'm going to go ahead and clip onto that so i'll have my ground for the sensor and then the ground for the fan uh, right there and then that way my wires will go that way and back up towards the front we got the wiring done on the uh, electric fan. So I just got my wires laying there. It already been uh, heat shrinked and everything. Um, got some wire loom we're gonna be uh, putting on there. So we'll get that uh, sorted out. And the intake is all on. And uh, the only thing we got for the cooling system now is we're going to install the uh, uh, radiator hoses on the upper and lower. And at that point, that's when we could go ahead and pull it down on the vacuum and uh, get all the air out of it and then install the coolant. So, all right guys, so the hoses are in now. Um, and uh, the next step is going to, we're gonna pull it down in the vacuum. And we also just gotta tidy up the wires. So here is my, uh, the vacuum system. So I have the, the, um, the rubber insert just goes into the coolant tank. And uh, this is pretty much what I end up using for all of them. And it just, for different sizes. So just put it in there and tie, uh, get it nice and snug. And, uh, and then that's where my, my hose goes through. And then uh, I have my vacuum side where all the air comes out. And then this is where it uh, starts to take the coolant in. So. so she's pulling down really quick, which is great. So now we're here into the green about 27 28 right in there we're getting really close so usually i stop it right about there and then technically what i do is just kind of wait around and uh, see if she drops and if she starts to drop um that means we got a little bit of a leak so she's looking like she's holding very well normally literally within five to ten seconds you should be able to see it starting to uh uh, to come down and it's not it's staying steady right there so i consider that a a win
what we're going to do is we're going to grab the coolant real quick and we're just going to let it uh, suck the coolant in. So. Okay, so I got my uh, containers of the uh, antifreeze down below me. Um, and uh, the biggest thing, and this is where it's a good thing to use this, is when you do it this way, you take all the air out of the system. So when you normally fill it up, uh, you have a chance of air pockets. Doing it this way, there is no chance of air pockets. It's going to suck nothing but uh, coolant in. So, and um, in all essence, um, she should be ready to go once she's all topped off. So there's the hose right here. And there we go. You gotta keep an eye on the actual container and see where you're at on level wise. So you do not run it empty and suck air in. And as you see it suck in the, uh, the coolant, you can see the, the gauge starts to go up. And that is uh, fill in the void. All right, so um, as you can see, we are using the green coolant. And the reason why we're using the green coolant is that's what was already originally in the car. So instead of um, filling it up with um, green and blue, we decided to go with what was in there. So uh, that's why we have green. So you can see the gauge, it's pretty much staying sturdy, but then you'll see a, uh, the coolant will just start to fall back down into the, uh, into the canister. And... All right, so it made a liar out of me. But that's it, she won't take no more. Yep. Okay, so Coolant is in. Um, she's where she needs to be on the level on the search tank here. And uh, I got my cap on and that is it. The only thing we needed to end up doing is uh, finalizing everything else so that we could uh, run the engine and uh, make sure everything is good. As of right now, um, like I stated before, she held pressure so there is no leaks and that's, that's the greatest part. So on the coolant side, that is completely done, but then we have the electrical portion here for the electric fan. And all I have to end up doing is just uh, cleaning this up and uh, putting it, uh, putting some uh, wire loom in. And then this will be done as well. And um, yeah, we're going to take a few minutes to figure out the next item to work on. So stay tuned. Just trying to finish off the, uh, the, the wire. So I've already started my wire loom. And uh, I got it uh, here from the switch itself. Um, going down underneath here, I've got the plug to the fan kind of zip tied in a way there. I will get it more secure once the headlight is in because I don't want to secure it and have to take it apart just to put the headlight in. And so I have my wires running up through here on the, on the side here where some of these already ran. And uh, this is all I got left and then the other section there. And uh, I already got the other uh, relay, which will go right here. And then she's gonna look Pretty. Um, I would like to say as uh, good as OEM, but uh, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So. As of right now, the coolant is completely done. Uh, I tidied up the wiring harness, um, so everything is wire loomed. And on this side, you can look at it. It really looks really nice. Uh, so thumbs up and a pat, pat on the back for me. And um, so this is pretty much going to wrap up this whole thing. We uh, kind of started with a certain items that we were going to place. Um, so what we end up doing is we replaced all the uh, idle pulleys that were in there. We replaced the, uh, the belts, uh, thermostat, thermostat housing. Um, we went and did the um, uh, water pump. And um, with that, with the whole coolant, we went in and did the coolant lines. Now, this is where it got kind of tricky and we had to t stop and order some more parts is while we were here, there were so many hoses that uh, we didn't take in consideration, like the heater hoses, that uh, we decided to go ahead and order those. So every coolant hose slash heater hose that is underneath the intake manifold was replaced. Um, so um, with all those heater, uh, heater hoses that we end up doing, um, and then we also, we replaced the radiator, put a new aluminum radiator in, all the hoses for that as well, and we did an electric fan. And with the electric fan, as you can see the wiring, that's what, uh, um, so it could work off the coolant sensor that we have here on the side, so that way when the temperature gets to a certain degree, it's gonna kick that fan on. And uh, so we did uh, do other stuff and we will touch base on that and on a different video um, because we were already here and might as well do it all at the same time. So stay tuned for the whole uh, installation of the throttle body. 
uh, the dine-in uh, cold air intake. And then also uh, we did um, the power steering um, uh, reservoir, all the hoses and the racks. So uh, keep an eye out for those.